So I was like, yeah, Christian, of course you can't tear the wild bears apart. You stick your arm in that bush, you're going to get degloved. It's yeah. just going to be skin and blood. It's just, it's berries that are wild. They yeah. will attack any body part put inside of a bush, especially during a team tournament called Anarchy. The only thing that is anarchist about this whole thing is the wild berries. Yeah, so I told him, uh, you want ratings? You want merch sales? You want t-shirts all over the... You might want to... Hey, oh. boys. Huh. Hey, oh, hey, hi. Hey, Ricky. Hi, Ricky. It's been a little... This is I know we didn't leave on the greatest of terms, this and is a, this uh, is you know, I had a, you know, I had to, you know, find my way. I'm and perfectly fly. happy where I am right now. Thank you. You know what? Much. I'm perfectly happy with where you're at now too. Oh, thanks, man. I've been watching oh, you guys okay, from the thanks. sidelines. I left Bibiani. You know, he wasn't doing so great. Oh, it didn't work out. <laughs> Turns out he's doing okay now, but uh, you know, my opinions have changed about you too. I like really? the way you guys work together, and I got one really? thing to say. What's it? Wild Mary! And you can yes. boss me around. Tell me to do whatever you want. I'm That's how I do it. How about you start by getting that beer bong? We got a fucking match to fight. Beer bong incoming, boys. The Wild Berries, they're known as entertainers, and now they're also known as winners. They started out 0-2. Nobody ever gave them a shot to win a match. They were just kind of fun at parties. You got the Wild Berries and the real rejects about to go head to head. You see the red, the white, the blue. I'm wearing this because we play for the common man. And your winners! The Wild Berries! Kingsman! Look out, Kingsman. Kingsman! We're coming for you! <laughs> we no, have a winner Cat by way of TKO! Wow! Ultimate Schmodown Team Tournament 2018. The theme is anarchy. Do you mean the Wild Berries are the still wild together? Are They're still together. Ooh, the professor. Oh, Lon, Lon Harris. Lon Harris coming in strong this season. Lon coming Harris. Strong. No. <laughs> what? JTE. Wow. JTE and Lon Harris. The professor Lon Harris, who had showed with that match against Ethan how much he knows. A match against Cody Hall that was also equally impressive. And JTE, who has come in off of two straight losses in teams, and they're going to be going up against the Wild Berries. Ken, the afternoon podcast from self Napsock. I am Mark Baby Carrots Ellison. Ken, I welcome them to the showdown. I should have welcomed them back to pure anarchy because we are in the midst of the tournament now. What a matchup we have today between one team that managed to stay together versus a brand new squad called the Evil Geniuses. I am excited to see both of these teams. I have no idea which way this will go. Mm -hmm. You have two uh, teams here, kind of, I mean, I don't want to say opposite, but... Uh, but, I mean, one's a library, one's a frat party. That's what this is. The Wild Bears, I don't even know how they managed to stay together. I thought the anarchy was tossing things all asunder. And here are these guys, a little bit of that Makuga luck comes into play. And, and he, uh, you know, draws a name, and it's his buddy. Uh, I, I, it's, it's amazing that that happened. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mike Kalinowski obviously has his, hang, his fingerprints all yeah. over this tournament. And it was a shock, and maybe that was part of that Josh Makuga magic that we've seen rear its ugly head time and time again, mm -hmm. dating all the way back to 1972's Immaculate Reception, permeating through his marriage to someone way out of his league. And now right. he gets to remain partners. And not just that, he has a manager now in Ricky Elliott, who I think maybe could take the Wild Berries he to the next level, and if not that, corporate speaking yeah, engagement. You met Ricky Hayberg, who's who was former friends with Elliot Dubarry. Uh, it, it, it's 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 interesting that he's back in the picture and kind of adapting uh, to their style yeah. a little bit. Hayberg yeah. was at times a little more quiet, more reserved. He was working with Bibiani and all those guys, and now he's here. And uh, you know, if if Elliot and Ricky are are back together doing that like predator handshake thing, that's even more power driving this team into this. Did tournament. you say Ricky Hayberg? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Sounds like a nice young man. I would yeah. love to meet him. When you look at the evil geniuses, you're mm. right. At least one of them is the polar opposite of the Wild Berries. The Wild Berries laugh at a raunchy comedy-like Animal House, whereas yep. you imagine that Professor Lon Harris sits at home and enjoys a quiet evening with Frazier and his many cats. His teammate, however, yeah. JTE, a guy no stranger to not only the white-hot spotlight of the Schmodown, but the playoff format in general that we've done here for a number of years now, and even winning some playoffs having a belt around his waist. Here's the thing. I know the Knights of Ken and some of my stuff has maybe taken me away from working with JT, but let me tell you something right now. He is one of the greatest champions of all time. Yep. He has proven this time and time again. He's coming here. Uh, he and Snyder are a Hall of Fame team. They could never compete again, and we would enshrine them tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's how good they were, and JT, time and time again, kept proving he was a force in that team. And, and, and Lon Harris, a professor, this is a guy who spends his Friday nights reading Hitchcock scripts with some brandy, just sniffing us, hmm, mm, the words, the words, they jump off the page. Like, this is that type of guy. <laughs> and this, these two together, it's, it's like a vacuum at a bus station. I don't know how it's going to work. We're about to find out what that metaphor is all about, and we're also going to hear from the competitors pre-match right now. Ah, greetings, my students. It is I, the professor, returning after a long sabbatical to once more compete, this time in the team division. Very excited to be in a new layer of this Schmodown casserole. Dude, I don't understand a word you said. Uh, listen, I am not just your partner. I am an ex-champion, okay? I was, you know, a distinguished colleague, a, a fellow faculty member. Yeah, I went to college. What does that have to do with it? Like a disease. You can't get rid of the wild berries. It doesn't matter if it's a tournament or a non-tournament. We stick together. The energy that is the wild berries shall not be defeated. It's not just about competing. It is about educating the show. It's about raising up young minds. Ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. All right, sh 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 shut your mouth a little bit here. Uh, the main fact oh, is rude. I am an ex-champion for a year and a half. You have the book smarts and your little pipe and all that, but I have the street smarts, and the streets is where you win championships. I'm like Lionheart, man, Van Damme in it. Rest your voices. You need them for answering trivia. Come on. Listen, you're facing Lon. You're facing JTE. The, the baby, baby geniuses. geniuses. <laughs> Pathetic. Let me ask you something. Who's got more to lose? Them. I give Makuga some credit. I faced this guy before. He's not a pushover. He has a little, I think it's a little bit of an act to be like, oh, I'm a crazy wild man. But honestly, when it comes down to it, at times he knows his shit. Now, are they both actual professional horticulturalists? I don't think they love horror movies. Um, I don't think that's their strength at all. I think it's time for the baby geniuses to get a big old spanking and go home with a soiled little diaper, courtesy of eating some raw wild berries. Yep. Come back for your stomach. They are very, very spicy. I think it's going to be a productive and enriching series of matches that we're going to embark on. You remind me of my second stepdad. This is the worst. Let's just go win this match. It's time to get crazy! It's time to pump up those numbers! No, I don't know the movie that that quote is from, but these guys do, and they're gonna show you right now! It's time for the Pumper! Wild Now let's get drunk and win some trivia! All right, Will, can you see that? The Wild Berries up to their usual wow. antics, being very loud, loud into the mic. Nice to see Ricky come in there and restore some semblance of order, but then really get into the Wild Berry spirit himself. And I was not aware that they had T-shirts for sale. Thanks for letting us know, gentlemen. <laughs> when you look at the evil geniuses, I see that chemistry working right away. They may not understand each other's references when, it time, when it's time to just have a conversation, right. but I think when they get up on the desk, it's all about chemistry. I have a weird feeling they're going to do great in that department. It's interesting to see these two. Well, on one hand, you have opposites attract, perhaps, with Lawn and JT, and then you have like-minded fools competing together here. That promo from the Wild Berries is going to be used in classes by police departments to encourage minors to drink less. It is that kind of a, of a promo. And the other, you know, JT, he's been here before. You can kind of see in his face. He's just ready to compete. Well, I know the Wild Berries are great at chugging alcohol. The Evil Genius is great at smelling it before they have a sip. Ken, what is some Tale of the Tape strings? Tale of the Tape. Let's start with the Wild Wild Berries, a known entity, their strengths include, well, I think comic book movies, action adventure, new releases, and of course, Bad Boys 2. It's not necessarily a specific category. 
But at any point, Makuga will start re reciting that movie. It is not a wedge on the wheel. Don't worry, everybody at home. All right, and for the evil geniuses, JTE, little evil himself, and the professor, uh, strings include Oscars, uh, new releases as well, comic book movies, Sylvester Stallone, not even movies, just Sylvester Stallone himself, and lecturing the masses. That sounds really good, and Ken, it's about to get really loud here on the set, so mm -hmm. I would just quietly remind everybody, hey, check out the Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon, select which tier is right for you, support the show if you have some bucks to give. Um, Ken, I feel pretty prepared, I, are you I, ready to I go? I think it's time? Then it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown! <laughs> Here we suck. The go. lead singer of Foghat, 87 to 89, will be introducing the competitors. Ken, without further ado. Alrighty then, here we go. Three rounds to a finish. Introducing first, with their record of two wins and two defeats, representing beer gardens and dance floors everywhere, accompanied to the arena by their manager, Ricky Haber. Josh, the Wild Man Maguga, and Elliot, the Mountain Dewberry, the Wild Berry. That's a Coors Light, some boxed wine, and this. their manager, Ricky Haber. Wow. Ricky there. They're getting it going. Wow. That's right. Look at this. Wow, unbelievable. Uh, there's some discrepancy as to what Ricky Josh Makuga is drinking, nope. so I'm not sure. He? Oh! Uh, Ken, he is, I believe, uh, going to attempt to use a beer funnel to chug some very cheap wine. Oh. Here we go. Wow. Oh, he did it. Thank he did it. Goodness, it wow. was not the, the whole, whole bottle. bottle. Wow. And okay. The Wild Berries are seated. Elliot with his customary uh, case of Coors Light. Josh McCougar right. with his customary Roberto Clemente Prom Tuxedo. All right, indeed. All right, indeed. Their opponents making their debut as a team. Representing high class, the Professor Lord Harris and the former team champion of the world, Little Evil, J.T.E., the Evil Genius Here comes the professor. This emerging professor. to a lot of booze, the professor. They don't seem to be, oh, look at that. J.T.E., Dutch look professor. Look at that, he's been hitting hit the gym. So gently out of the way. The professor. The professor. They don't uh, seem on the same. I'll tell you what. They don't seem to be on the same page. No. Uh, I don't know what he said there, but uh, yeah, he, they're, they're definitely not on the same page. He, this he, league's embrace of hooliganism yeah. truly shame. I, 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 you know, I, take the pipe out of your mouth. We can't hear you. I, don't, I find what's interesting is I will not. I guaranteed a uh, pre-show that I think that they would have a lot of chemistry. JT pushing Juan Harris out yeah. of the way to milk in the booze. It, it was a competition to see who could get booed more with the evil geniuses. How is it going to factor into the match? you got to wonder about that. What you don't have to wonder about any longer are the rules in round number one. It works like this. Eight questions are asked to the field. These questions come from eight different corners of the movie, Trivia Schmodown Galaxy. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing available in round number one. Keep in mind, this is the team format, but you may not rely on your teammate to help you with the answers in round one. This is an individual exercise. All points that you earn will be added to your team's total. However, I will remind each competitor and each team of your three team usages of the JTE rule throughout the match, yes, it was named after JT because he used it to delay so he could think of a correct answer. You can also use it for its proper iteration if you didn't hear a question correctly. You guys can also each use one challenge per team anytime throughout the three rounds of the match. I will go to the Wild Berries first. Are you ready to compete? <laughs> Fuck Mission yeah. Points. Look, do it! All right, and Wild the Evil Berries. Geniuses? They were writing throughout your entire presentation, Mr. I know the rules. Then let's get I've ready to move down. 147 oh. matches. Oh. Oh. Three rounds to the finish. Give 
give the crowd what they want, Ken. Give them easy questions that these guys don't know. All right, All right. we will do our best, okay. although I will warn Josh McCuga, the questions have already been written uh, well before the taping of this yeah, episode. Yeah, we know. Uh, cool, 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 cool. skaliska has been working for days. That's okay. not his last name. Chris oh, Okay. wrote the first question in the vein of action adventure. This is action adventure, and your question is, who directed 1996's Mission Impossible? Uh, you know, with entrances like that, you just want to get the match underway. Wow, I'm already exhausted. Five, four, three, two, one. Looking for answers, starting with Josh Bakuga. I Every time, this is Joe Carnahan? No, sir. All right. Good action guess. Brian De Palma. That is correct. Shoot. L.A. Dewberry? Nothing. It was the great auteur, Brian De Palma. All righty This is starting off hot. Fuck. Hey, before this before this gets out of hand, you guys can go to tpublic.com. Pick up our T-shirts. Ricky's wearing them right now. They're fantastic. A poly blend of cotton and love right in there. You know, he's such a bright person. Makes John and Deb McCuga so proud. Thanks. Second question comes in the category of movie release dates. Movie release dates. Nobody likes this category. Yeah. Scott Mance loves it. Ken continues. Mance isn't here. Pee Wee's Big Adventure was Shit. released in what year? It's an important year in my Damn life. It. Josh McCuga's uh, father, very esteemed Honda salesman, Josh McCuga himself, mm -hmm. sells T-shirts. That's right. Five, four, three, two, and one. JTE. I went with 1989. Incorrect, sir. Elliot. 1985? That is correct. Whoa. Lon Harris. I said 1984. Off by a year, Makuga. 1989. But wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. They're on the board, Ken, and the crowd seems Woo! to love it. Woo! All right. We I'll move on to the world of dramas. Dramas, your next question. What 2010 film? follows a poor teen searching for her drug-dealing father amongst the criminal underbelly of the rural Ozarks community in order to keep her family intact. Well, that just sounds depressing. Yeah, that is going to be a tough one if I get JTE ruled. They're scribbling away so here. Some, some scribbling, some confusion. Something. We're going to go to five, can, yeah. four, three, two, and one pens down. Go to Elliot. I know it's not Cold Mountain. It's definitely not. <laughs> uh, I put Winter's Bone. That is correct, sir. Shoot, I knew that. Makuga. I put Ozark. It's still. What, you, just, you just named part of the question. All right. JT. Winter's Bone. All right. They're up. I four love that movie two. Too. I really oh. liked it. Ken, it is now four to one evil All geniuses. Right. You got to wonder if Lon Harris, the was professor, an indie movie. will penalize <laughs> JT for not using an apostrophe. That's right. Yeah, I like how Makuga's trying to make people think he ha just doesn't watch the pi uh, Pirates series from 1991 <laughs> over again. All right. Fourth question. Comes in the category of 80s movies. 80s movies. <sighs> so movies in a decade when I was already 41. <laughs> <laughs> Which actor played Marty's father, George McFly, in Back to the Future? Back to the Future. Right. You know what? Uh, you're writing. I believe in time travel. As do I. Yeah. I'm not Five, even here now. Four, YouTube evidence. Three, two, one, we go to Lon Harris. Uh, a fine actor, also a director of some esteemed art films. It's Crispin Glover. That All is right. correct. Josh McCoogie, did you have it? Uh, yes, Crispin Isotoner Glover. Ooh. He got it right. Dan Marino, it. shout out, extra point. Extra, no, okay. Uh, we we uh, cannot give JT. extra credit, but we do go to JT. Crispin Glover. All right, they take a 6-2 lead. Elliot. Crispy Crispin Glover. That's right. All right, they keep pace. Wow. They keep pace. Six the wild berries keep pace. All right, we move on to the world of fantasy science fiction. Boo. Fantasy sci-fi. Your question is... That's JT's entire life. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver has played Ellen Ripley in how many alien films? Mm. You know that scene where the alien comes out of his stomach? That is inspired by me going to Chipotle. <laughs> As is the uh, mouth coming out of the other mouth. Yes, five, four, three, two... One look of your answer, starting with Josh McCuga. Two. Incorrect, sir. JT. Four. That is correct. <laughs> Elliot. Four. We got it. Lon Harris. It is four. All right, look at that. I was going to say 
Two times right. two is four. I, I don't <laughs> like movies with scary oh. shit. She was right. only in two good ones. Yeah. There was two good ones. All two good right, ones. all right. But well done on knowing hey, arithmetic. Caveat. <laughs> Uh, to that, uh, never mind. Nah, yeah. we're, you guys can start a podcast later. All right. <laughs> Question six comes in the Very category good. of comedies. Comedies. Robin Williams and Nathan Lane star together in what 1996 comedy? I cannot wait to watch that clip over and over again of Josh McCuga inaccurately saying two, but sounding correct. <laughs> <laughs> two, five, two, four, <laughs> three, two. two, one. Looking for answers. Starting with JT. The birdcage. That is correct, sir. Elliot, Elliot. you have it. Le birdcage. Yeah, that's La Cage aux Falls. I was going to say the French version, but it's the birdcage. That's right. right. That's what Alex Trebek would have done. The Look at that. Cage. He yeah. got All it. Right. The birdcage. All, All right. right. All right. To horror thriller. Uh, okay. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Oh. JT has hold on. Hold on. JT has a question. Yes. I once lost a point because I didn't write the thing. Okay. Do you want to okay. use a challenge, JT? What do you think, Lon? You should. You make you make the call. You I don't feel like we're gonna need our challenge, so I'm gonna go ahead and challenge it because right. the thing, the birdcage. Okay, the okay. challenge has been issued. We will be right back with our All result right. after consulting with the judges. Specific birdcage. Yeah. All right, we are back, and after consulting with a number of judges up here at the answer desk, we have determined a that... A lot of judges. Because there is not a movie called Birdcage, then we can accept Birdcage as the answer for Woo! the Birdcage. Wow. And the Wildberries do get the point, and the Evil Geniuses <laughs> lose their challenge for the rest of the match, Ken. That wow. could factor in as much as the Evil Geniuses don't want to admit it, nice as try, we now babies. move <laughs> on to your seventh we question. We evil babies. In round number one comes from the world of horror thriller. Josh, close your eyes. Oh, God. Who stars as Ross Jennings, a doctor with a strong fear of spiders, in 1990s Arachnophobia? <laughs> Yes! Spiders! For the record. <laughs> is that guy okay? Five, four, RV3 three, three, two, one. Pens down. We go to Elliot Dewberry. I, this movie is a big blind spot in my memory right now, so I put nothing. He put nothing. <gasps> right. No point, Juan Harris. It is Jeff Daniels. That is Fuck, correct. That's 11 right. six. Bakuga, Jeff, Jeff Daniels. Daniel. Hey. Yeah. 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 Jeff Daniels. All right. Okay. Jeff Daniels. Stop. Mm. L. Surprised that uh, If you JT just wrote Jeff Daniel, we got to Jeff Daniels. Yeah. Yeah. You know? you All right. It's like arachnophobia. Uh, Final question in this first round. <laughs> Mercifully ending it. Ken. All right. Here How we go. You? The How category is animated. Animated. Like Makuga's wardrobe. <laughs> 1978's Watership Down portrays the surprisingly violent world of what kind of animal as they try to find a new home. Is that a real question or one that I, you just made up extemporaneously? I, I, I thought I just had a fever dream, to I be honest with you there. I've not heard of that movie. Five, four, three, two, one. Looking for answers. Pens down, pens down. Look for answers with Lon Harris. I believe they are rabbits. That is correct. Okay, he's seen Josh the McCuga. movie. <laughs> I wanted to write seals, but then I wrote whales, but it kind of looks like <laughs> Thor's. <laughs> A lot of wet whores running around. <laughs> hey, JT. Uh, that would be rabbits. He got it. Wow. Elliot, Elliot, did you have you it? You sure it wasn't hamsters? Uh, <laughs> we will look again. First of all, G -force. Oh. Some, <laughs> some, some <laughs> long-eared hamsters. Rabbits. And first of all, Ken, the evil rabbits on water have managed to double the score of the wild berries in round one. But make no mistake, the home viewer, the wild berries are not out of this match. Other teams might be when confronted with the knowledge that right. JT and Lon respectively have showed. But the wild berries have been up against the wall many times. And they always seem to fight back. Will they do the same as we it's, head into round number two? It's tough to say because we're taping this now at 7 p.m. McCook has been drinking since 10 a.m. Sometimes you have to wonder how he does in the second round. We because. just don't know if that alcohol helps or hurts, but we're about to find out. And so is the wheel because we are here for round number two. This is where teammates can consult with one another on each and every question asked. Yep. They're going to hear a series of questions that correspond to some sort of movie trivia category. That category is determined by the wheel of fate slash justice, perhaps doom. You get 10 categories on there, as well as the fan favorite spinner's choice and the every teammate dreads opponent's choice. Each question in round number two is worth two points. 
If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice, at which point we will give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. I'm sure the professor is very familiar with the multiple choice format given his years <laughs> of teaching students. And we are also going to remind you challenging is available for one team and stealing is available for both teams because the evil geniuses enjoy a 14 to 7 advantage over their drunken berries counterparts. You guys can either spin first or defer to the berries. Uh, we'll be going first. Okay. JG, it looks like he's got a plane to catch, man, or he's driving <laughs> someone to a, to a bus station. I don't know. That's what's Tom going on with him. He Brady. Looks, he's focused. focused. Look at that spin. Tom Brady. Focused. He had a weird. Ba it was like TB12. It was like TB12. watching Cody Hall bowl when he does the flip Just thing. And that's what he did there. And then a little yeah. wrist spin. JT really. Fills out that jersey uh, well. Cody Hall once <laughs> bowled a 320 game. A 320 uh, game. Cody Hall has no! to yes. break no! any bowling league's oh. ultimate new, new releases. What do they think? They're, uh, they're, JT's not even consulting no. with Lawn. No, I'm talking to him right now. Hold on. Uh, right. Oh, 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 okay. No, I thought right, he was walking back. Is this back legal? There. Ricky, challenge this conversation. Favorites can start with one another. We're, we're going to need a decision ah! here. They're, they're going to spin again. They're going to spin again. Sorry for yelling into the mic, Cobb, sir. We had to do a little parent teacher conference. Parent teacher conference, indeed. They could be, you know, block. Clusters, they yeah. could be small indie releases. It yep. really is a mixed bag of films that have recently appeared here in the United yep. States or indeed around the world. Uh, JT wearing his uh, JT Tom Brady dad bod jersey. Customary Adidas good. hat <laughs> backwards. That's right. Looking like That's it is company. coming close. Is it going to be a opponent's choice, Ken? Opponent's oh! choice. Oh! Wow. What? Wow. It's like, it's like they just mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. get 80. Satisfactory. Satisfactory. And Ken, before you get to your six questions in the world of 80s movies, I'll remind everybody out there that there is a sponsored slice out here on this wheel, and it is from sports. It is sports. So had JT spun sports, or if the Wild Berries do spin sports and they decide to keep it, we will announce that patron. All right, here you go. Six questions coming in the category of 80s movies. 80s movies, they seem pretty confident. Let's go with question number one. In Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, what is the name of Bill and Ted's band? Oh, God on. Uh, we'd be Wild Stallions. That is correct for two points there. Not two written. points. Yeah, G kid, spell it. W Y. All right. <laughs> Second question out of six. Who portrays Dalton's love interest, Dr. Clay, in Roadhouse? All right, uh, I was trying to go through it there. Great all American film. That's right. Five, four, three, two, one. Need Multiple an choice. Oh. I can't remember her last name. I can't remember her last all name. All right. It is A, Kelly Lynch. B, Lori Petty. C, A, Kelly Lynch. That's correct for a point. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, for a point. Be aware of that countdown. Be aware and of that. And this kid countdown. calls himself a Swayze fan. I you know. cannot All right. remember her last name. All right. It's, you know, She's J a doctor. JT for wants to get that shirt. All right. Third question out of six. In Third movie, question out of six. Who directed The Big Chill? It's uh, Lawrence Kasdan. And that is right. Two more points. Not a bad screenwriter right here. Uh, he started uh, to work on some scripts. We could really go for a Tanya Harding right about now, everybody. Um, uh, that means take him out at the knees. <laughs> right. The key to that is to not announce here. it in advance right. publicly. Well. All right. All right. <laughs> Fourth question. Fourth question. In History of the World Part 1, who plays a slave by the name of Josephs? Josephs. Josephus. 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 I, I believe it is Gregory Hines. That is correct. Two Jesus points. Jesus No matter how I said it. The evil geniuses have tap danced their way to a 21 to 7 advantage, and they still have a question remaining. <laughs> I'd All like right. to really gauge the room right now in disappointment that the wild berries are getting gypped, and I know it. I can All see right. it's a fix. All right. All right. You, your Ricky, duly noted. fifth, fifth we, question. We fixed question. it by knowing a lot more about movies. It's right. totally unfair. Uh, yeah. Nobody Who knows plays about Robert Carradine's <laughs> best friend, Lewis, in 1984's Revenge of the Nerds. Revenge of the Nerds. That, that held up well. Mm -hmm. They're debating there. Not, They're multiple choice. I'm not 100% right. sure it was left. A, I, Robert Downey Jr. No. B, Anthony Edwards. C, Eric Stoltz. D, Jeremy Piven. B. Uh, all right, that is correct for a point. Anthony Edwards. All right, last question in round two for the evil geniuses. So Can they compile no, on even further and really put the wild <laughs> We're aware. Oh, I'm aware. We're aware. Here we go. Here we go. 
This actress played the party girl, Jules Van Patten, in 1985's St. Elmo's Fire. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say Demi Moore. That is correct for two more points. A 1. Wow. Four to seven. Evil geniuses lead. like St. Elmo's Fire soaring higher and higher. <laughs> and now it is all up to wow. the wild okay. berries. I don't think they like that reference. They don't Ken. like it. I uh, enjoyed hey. it, as did some members of my family. Now we go to the wild berries who may be knee-deep in a case of Coors Light. Now they need to give that wheel its best spin that they've ever given it because right. they find themselves <laughs> in quite a pickle. No. Yeah. Whoa, look at that spin. That is a beefy spin. Yeah. Spins away. Spins away. Dewberry. Come away, on. Man. Spin is away. Come what on. Is he do is he if this lands on opponent's choice, JTE sold his soul to the <laughs> devil for the chance at championships of yeah. every legend of the Smodown. Elliot, it's the not fair, and I don't like him. of praying and masturbating yeah. with yeah. that Oh, for yeah. fart's yeah. sake. They got it. Is it a punch? Uh, no, it's two. Uh, oh. Ken, it is thrillers. And Josh McCuga may want to stay away from that category. Mm. Can he do you know it? Into spinning again. They're going to spin again. They're gonna spin again. <laughs> Ricky says, again. give him a spin again. <laughs> Taking a different approach right, that time. Gentle spin, gentle spin, yeah, gentle, spin, 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 gentle, spin, spin gentle spin, gentle spin, gentle spin, gentle spin, gentle spin. Gentle spin, and gentle spin, gentle. Come on, Will Smith. Going Come on, Will Smith. It's not going to be a opponent's choice. I don't have to Kevin worry about that, but it could be Kevin Smith movies. Kevin That's Smith. it. Kevin Smith movies. Kevin Smith, movies. Kevin Smith, Kevin Smith movies. films. I don't feel that certain. All right. All right. And here we go for <laughs> the Kevin Smith movie. The Donnie Wild went to prison. If I, I can ask you for the entertainment value, how confident do you feel in your Kevin Smith movie spin? Uh, that On be... a scale of one to ten? We got four. Yeah. <laughs> 4.5. Right. Well, you're going to need a lot more than four and a half points if you want to make it into round three. <laughs> hey, thanks, Mom. Appreciate you. <laughs> you get six questions in round number one, young man. Your first one. Who was Bruce Willis's co-lead in the Kevin Smith-directed action comedy Cop Out? Uh, Tracy Morgan. That's correct for two points. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. Makuga. Cop it in there. Two points. All right. Your next question in the world of Kevin Smith movies who played Dante Hicks in the film Clerks? Oh, what's that guy's name? Yeah, that's I, the, I honestly that's the question. Know. Do you know him? I feel like I was Multiple choice. Yeah, multiple choices. We can provide that. Shoot. Is it A, Brian O'Halloran, B, Scott Mosier, C, Jason Mewes, or D, Jeff Anderson? O'Halloran? One point, One point for the Wildberries. <laughs> <laughs> they are negotiating their way around the Kevin Smith yeah. wheel. I'll remind everybody at home they need four more points to ensure themselves of getting into round three unless the evil geniuses can foster a steal. Your next question. Michael Rooker stars as an evil father in which Kevin Smith film? That would be Mallrats. That's two correct. more two points. points. Look at that. They're almost yeah. safe. Yeah. Almost yeah. safe. Your next question for Kevin Smith films in the 1999 film Dogma. What kind of creature was Salma Hayek's serendipity? Farts. Five, four, three. Multiple choice. I can provide that. Is it A, Angel, B, Muse, C, Seraphim, or D, Golgothin? I'm going to go with Golgothin. That is incorrect, incorrect for the Steel Evil Geniuses. That would be Muse. Oh, that wait, is correct. Right. I got it there. Oh. Oh, who does she embody? I thought you saw, like, summon. And it is now 13 points. The, the, the monster that, that comes out of the poop. That um, is the Golgothan is the shit demon, but that, yeah. I believe that, yeah. that is the Golgothan shit demon, but that is not Salma yeah. Hayek's serendipity. She yeah. was the muse. Your next question. Fifth one. What is the name of the store in Clerks? Oh, oh for fart's sake. All right. Remember? Not confident there. I mean, it's, oh, guys, it's there. Go to Mini Mart? Five, five, four, three. Multiple choice. Is it A, Movies, B, Quick Stop, C, Speedway, or D, One Stop? Quick Stop. It is Quick Stop That's for quick one point. point. All 
Right. Still, we can't win. So we can't win. They, this is some horse manure. Can it might come down to this because if they miss this question or even only able to get one point out of it, they're not going to make it to round three. Let's in like clerks two. two. We're one here person. all season, guys. All yeah. season. All right. Don't here. you worry about it. Those t-shirts don't not go on sale ever. All right. Uh, that was a double negative. I'm not so sure about that. Here's your last <laughs> question in round number two to go to round three. Who played Miri? And Zach and Miri make a porno. That'd be Elizabeth Banks. Wow! Look at that! Whoa! Wow! 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 We are going to I round number back. three. We're going to round three. The Wild Berries are unthinkable. Very excited about that. Wow. Ken and I not enthused about this development here no. on the desk, but we will be the professionals that we aspire to be yep. and announce round number You're three. You're stuck with us That's for right. one more round, Mark. Hey, uh, yeah. Mark. Round number three. How about yes. you quit being a jerk about things yeah. and like us as people? I like Ben Makuga Shut as up, a Sturger. person. <laughs> yeah. I Your you what I questions will come from you in a matter of speaking. We need three numbers that range from 1 to 20 that you as teammates can determine which ones they are. They all correspond to a different movie trivia category up here. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one, three points. And your last one worth five points. I will point out to the Wildberries, they need to get each and every question correct in round three to continue it and force the hand of the evil geniuses. Otherwise, Ken, we will be in a technical knockout situation. Right. However, we get the Evil Geniuses numbers first from 1 to 20. Which ones would you prefer? JT, it's uh, tough to count we'll about go, 12, but get, we'll go good 7, luck. Mm -hmm. 11, mm -hmm. and 19. I just heard 7 11. Is there something yeah, else? Uh, yeah, yes, that? they said 19. That was for you, Ken. All right. That was for you. Meat for a snack. Say Hashtag big it. Bite afterwards. Meat you drug snack. tested that pipe? Meat for a snack. <laughs> for PED. All right. And Seven, now 11, we 19. go to the wild Icarus situation over here. Wild berries. Wild berries, we need your numbers. Three. Six. Nine. Look Whoa, at nine. that. Oh, Multiples. Wow. Whoa. Bah, bah, bah. Wow. I love the look on Josh McCuga's face where all he was thinking is don't say 7 11 or 19. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he yep. did it correctly, and I'm yep. proud of my friend. Yep. Yep. All yep. right. Uh, Ken Knapsack will be administering the questions to Woo. the Wild Berries. So without further ado, your two point question comes Good. From I want to talk to Ken. Ken. I'm tired of All righty. You chose <laughs> the number the three. Three. Which is Denzel Washington. Denzel Woo. Washington. All right. uh, which yeah, competitor is going to take it? Gonna take it. <laughs> Elliot is going to take this. Okay, they this is for Elliot and Elliot it. only. Listen, no, you do it. Three. Okay, so we're changing real quick. Can we do that? <laughs> yeah, they, as long as you're not read the question, yep. you may change. All right. Okay. Makuga's going to take it. Makuga's going to take it. Can we challenge? All right. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Love you, Lon. You're a great guy. Two point question in Denzel Washington. Name two films that have starred Denzel Washington and have been directed by Spike Lee. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, that's uh, no. And we'll give him 20 seconds. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Switch room. I don't, I don't even, I've never even seen a Spike Lee movie. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No. Josh <laughs> Makuga, he has uh, the extra he got five second advantage yeah. here. He got games. So, four. Okay. Go to five. Four. Three. Uh, can I get, uh, repeat the question? All right. One oh. JT rule down there. Name two films that have starred Denzel Washington and have been directed by Spike Lee. Gonna be down to 15 seconds. I'm telling you, I don't know Spike Lee movies that well. I really don't. Five, four, three, two. One. Time to repeat the question. All right, he got it in there. One left. Name two films that have starred Denzel Washington and have been directed by Spike Lee. All right, Four. he got game and do the right thing. And Joe, what up? The For and the wild berries have fallen to the mighty brain power of the evil geniuses. The wild berries an entertaining match as always. We kid them, but we love their entertaining presence here on the desk. And they got some correct answers, just not enough to compete with what I think could be a new superpower here emerging in anarchy, Ken. Absolutely. Victory by TKO, which means I can get to my reservation at Jersey Mike Subs. It's going to be a good Friday night for me. Do not need I'll a reservation what... there. You do not need a reservation there. We move to Jen Sturger, who has an interview with both the winner and the loser. Take it away, Jen. <sighs> Josh, Elliot, Wildberries. Sad berries. You know what? Just take it away, guys. 
We're we're just destroyed berries. This was gonna be our turn. The baby geniuses are men geniuses. I'll give them that. They this got, was a setup. They got really lucky. This was a setup by the Schmodown Industrial Complex to take down Ricky, the one Ricky. asset they had Ricky. that wasn't part of the swamp. Here's the thing. They spun 80s. These questions, they were so easy. Even I was on the sideline saying, I know those. This was handed to the other team. But you know what? It doesn't matter because nobody gets the cheers that you guys get. Nobody has the fan base that you guys have. Nobody is selling beautiful t-shirts like this on T Public like you guys do. We have a lot to look forward to this year from the Wildberries, so don't go anywhere because they're coming back with a vengeance. This season has only just begun, people. If you write us off now, you will have your own words served to you on a plate with the meat of a crow. Elliot, you're out of the tournament. Uh, can you Shit. Uh, just, Shit. Uh, just buy our well, shirts that's at, it then. Just buy our shirts at Team LA. Wow, man. Well, this ain't the last you see of the wild berries, all right? <laughs> well, that was a shit show. We're back with your winners, evil geniuses, Lawn. JTE, that was a really impressive performance considering that was the first time you guys have ever teamed up. How are you feeling right now? I mean, obviously, I think we feel very good. I think we feel like we're, we're doing what we set out to do, which is to educate the league and to, to sort of raise up some of these other competitors. Yeah, you know, going into this, uh, Kilinowski, Villanowski, he's, he's straight vanilla, what I always call him. Uh, he tried doing Rude. this to corrupt people and make, you know, you, you know what corruption means. I don't have a great grasp on it. But basically... The state or art of being corrupt. There you go. So basically he was trying to like make these teams to make him available to get to the belt. I think he might have created maybe another championship run here. I really feel like we have a chance to go to the top. You know, I went to summer school every year and I did okay. But maybe there is something to this whole studying and writing and spelling and stuff. He, I mean, despite his questionable appearance, uh, Joshua definitely does seem to have a master on uh, some of the basic elements of film history. Do you guys think you are that good or were the wild berries just that wild berries? Uh, a little bit of column A, a little column B. Uh, they, they're, they're not great, but Makuga, like I said, he could really step up sometimes, but he did uh, kind of fail in that last one there. I, I feel like if uh, Mr. Makuga and Mr. Barry had maybe done a little bit more of their coursework, maybe gotten eight hours of sleep the night before, maybe drank a little bit of water to stay hydrated, they might have performed a little bit better on the day of the exam. Okay, so now you've competed with both Lawn and Snyder. I gotta ask, sorry to make this weird for you, uh, who do you prefer? I prefer the person who's not gonna walk out on me, so I'm gonna go ahead and hear with the professor. Uh, listen, Snyder turned his back against me and Tom, and Tom is a genius much like you, but in a totally different way. Uh, so yeah, I definitely, uh, I feel like we got a chance to win the title here, maybe hold it for more than a year and a half. All right, well, congratulations again, guys. Look forward to seeing what you do in the tournament. Thank you, Thank you Jen. Well, you see that there, Ken. I mean, obviously the Wild Berries want everybody to know out there they can check out Tee Public right. and get one of their T-shirts. Sure. Thank you for that. We haven't seen the last of the Wild Berries. I don't think they're ever going to go away, much as we try uh, to call the Orca Man every six months. And as far as the evil geniuses go, you look at the professor, you look at JT, Little Evil, maybe not the most natural team-up I've ever seen, but that's not what Anarchy is all about, and they're proving it so far in the tournament. Kind of an Oscar Felix type of vibe to this team. We'll see where that takes them there. The Wild Berries... Yeah, they're a crowd favorite. People you got to love, love them. them. You do have uh, to love them. They are at times a sideshow. At times they are a titan of the game. You know, mm -hmm. Josh McCougar's luck, sometimes it, it takes him into the victory circle. It didn't there today. Yeah, you got to wonder how much we could have extended this match if Elliot had taken the Denzel Washington question. Yep. That was originally Josh Rowe said to one in the last second and uh, yep. didn't work out for them this time. And that is Ken Knapsack. Follow him on Twitter at Ken Knapsack. I am merely at Mark Ellis Live. And you guys can check out the Schmodown Rundown as well as the Movie Tribute Schmodown Facebook page. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you real soon around these parts here at the Movie Trivia Schmodown. You don't need a reservation for Jersey Mike's. How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. 
cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And yeah, there's some really crazy tears in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match for God's sakes.